We found out that he proposed to his girlfriend last month, and she said yes. We found out through a post on his Facebook page. Yes, that's right. We, the parents, found out about the engagement of our only child through effing Facebook. As if we weren't already in enough pain, we were stuck in the same cycle again for the past until he finally reached out to us. We got a call from our son this past Monday, and it was like a positive sign from the universe. He said he wanted to talk about our relationship. He asked if he could come to our house this Thursday with his girlfriend for support. We obviously said a resounding yes. We were anxious. I didn't expect it to be a tearful reunion, but definitely a good step in reconciliation. My wife and I discussed with each other about how to lead the conversation. We both agreed to apologize for any anguish we caused and to listen to what he has to say first. When Thursday came, we sat impatiently waiting for him after we came back from work. When he rang the doorbell and opened the door, there was no sense of warmth from him but a reluctant smile. His girlfriend almost felt sad being here. I had a feeling that night. They both refused any drinks we offered to them. My son felt extremely uncomfortable being there. My wife told him that if he wanted to speak first, that he should. This is what he said to us. He apologized to us if he caused us any emotional turmoil. He said his resentment started building up ever since he was little. There was a lot about our behavior that contributed to his point of view. He felt like having kids was more of a checklist that we wanted to complete instead of being actively interested in being a parent and having a deep bond as a parent. He said that whenever there was a disagreement with one of us, we had always taken each other's side over his. It felt like there was an us versus him type family dynamic. Whenever we came back home from work, we looked forward to seeing each other more than him. When it came to spending time with him, it felt like doing stuff with him was physically and emotionally draining. Like we needed a break from him after having a break with him. One-on-one -on -one time felt like it was even more taxing to us according to him. He also said that whenever there was time, we wanted to spend it only with each other. He recalled that we lit up when we wanted to spend time as a couple. We put more effort into having our date nights and couple time than spending time with him. He said we seemed more upset when we couldn't have couple time over having family time. The fact that we spent our vacation as a couple rather than as a family compounded the problem. He found it bizarre when we claimed we missed him after he came back from our trips. When he was young, he cried when we showed him pictures of our trips. We would comfort him by saying that we love him, but we need our couple time. He said that even made him more upset. He felt like we were using our parents, his grandparents, as our impromptu babysitters. He said that this feeling was further corroborated when our visits significantly decreased when he grew older. He admitted he gave up on having a relationship with us when he entered high school. He put more effort and time into his academics so he could use his energy in a more productive manner than on us. It didn't come as a surprise when we didn't notice because we never formed a close bond with him to notice such things. He said his academics and friendships satisfied him more than spending time with us. Eventually, we were just roommates to him. He became apathetic when we didn't spend time with him and turned us down many times. We always thought he was too busy for us. He said that his bond with us weakened even more during college. He never missed us and he got annoyed when we asked to meet him and complain about him not calling us often. He said he cried sometimes because he felt guilty of not missing us. One of the reasons he did well in his academics was because he wanted to do well in other aspects in his life, such as following his passion in physics. He wanted to lead a happy life with us barely or entirely out of it. That's when he started tearing up at that moment. It still hurts him that the reason he is successful today is because he wanted to get away from us. He said he felt free when he went to college, and now he is soon going to grad school this fall on the other side of the country. The past few months, he realized a lot of new things. He concluded by stating what he wants for the future. He said he is very grateful for what we did for him, such as paying for college. He will financially support us if we ever need it or be present when an emergency or family crisis occurs. Aside from that, we are not a priority in his life at all. We shouldn't be demanding phone calls and or him visiting us anymore. He said he shouldn't be forced to maintain a strong relationship with us, but we never cultured it while we raised him. He states that family or not, an adult isn't obligated to have and maintain a relationship with any other adult. He said he was stuck in a relationship with us he didn't want to have until he became independent. He no longer regrets his decision. He said at the end of the day, we chose to be his parents, not the other way around. We could have found ways to bond with him and find common ground and stuff to do with him. That way it didn't feel like a burden to be a parent to him. We never incorporated him in our lives and saw being a parent akin to a job. We had every opportunity to form a close bond with him and we never took it. Before he left, he said he wished us a happy and healthy life and said we were invited to his wedding if we wanted to come. Time froze after he left and we were flabbergasted at what happened. It was like he divorced us. My door is always open to him and I hope one day he can forgive us for the way we treated him. However, I don't know how to move on with this possibly permanent estrangement. Jack, I still love you son. Please come back. I'm sorry.